Bryce Heater sign off. Shifty work into the box. And the cross, it's in! Oh, it's LaRue! It's a dream return! Welcome to Casual FC, an Angel City preview pod. And our final Olympic <laughs> preview pod. And we are just having some fun. I'm your host, Mario Salazar, with my giggly co-host, <laughs> Angela Morales. This is what happens when you uh, decide to do a podcast with one of your friends. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, Hi, everybody. So- We're back for the ninth time this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's usually a lot that I cut out preamble. A lot of times we preamble and then we hit record. Sometimes we hit record and then remember something and just keep talking and then I have to cut it out. But a lot of times if you hear us halfway laughing already, it's probably because we hit record too soon. But yes, we are back to you with I don't know how many episodes it's been in the last couple of weeks. But we are 1 now million. finally. Bum, 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 like, I feel like we need everybody. Every warm up song, like every jock jam, every pump up <laughs> song, like pump, pump the jam, pump it up, like going into this episode. Bum, and then bum, I'm a. Bum, 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 yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Like I can Eva found out a couple of weeks ago that I can recite. With and without the music, the entire Jock Jam Mega Mix that came out in like 1998. Yeah. Um, maybe actually, maybe 1997, the entire thing to the millisecond. I know this thing. And she, we were in the car and I was like, You got to listen to this. You totally have heard it. And she's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I put it on and she was like, Oh, yeah, this song. And she was like, Why did it change? She had no idea there's 40 songs mixed in. <laughs> she's just looking at me at a signal at the canyon and riverside or something just, are you okay <laughs> and i'm just like listen to my baby aggressive be aggressive She's, oh my god <laughs> if you ever want to okay. just uh make my day play that song yeah so we're, we're trying to figure out stuff for the watch party what are we going to do how do we host what yeah. do we even have to do anything that might be some like halftime entertainment <laughs> <laughs> a talent show <laughs> oh no oh man this one is definitely gonna fall in shenanigans territory okay absolutely okay so the number one thing we have about about where we're at in the olympics is everyone is so goddamn tired including the viewers (laughs) yes emotionally waking up early we're staying up late like yeah (laughs) like we thought and granted I am still super thankful for the ability to stream and watch it whenever the hell I please. Yes. But when you watch back to back to back, and then we're now at the semifinal, we're like, oh, there's only two matches. Oh, no, guess what? The Summer Cup is also going to be playing <laughs> right after it. So it goes back to back to back. <laughs> It's oh, like a choose your own adventure book that just keeps getting weirder, if you yeah. will. But yeah, everyone's big tired. And Except for some yeah. people, but I'll get into that later. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's where we're at. Again, probably going to be a little bit loopy, a little bit shenanigans, but we'll get there eventually. And thank you for sticking through it. All right. How to watch the final matches. Check out NBC's Olympic website for any of the TV broadcast stuff. Sorry, we didn't do that. Just it's easier to say, just go on the Peacock app and watch it. Yeah, it'll be on select. It'll be on Universo Telemundo if it's still on one of those Spanish channels. I know it got really spotty for broadcast stuff at towards the end. The USA Network most likely in English. But again, just stream it on the Peacock app. Much easier. You can stream it in both English and Spanish. Either when you want. And Um, you can do multi-view on the Peacock app and watch four things at once. As somebody who has been letting my eyes bleed after watching (laughs) so many Olympics, just do it. It's if you ever want to get overloaded with sports in the best way, do that. It's great. (laughs) Although I will say that I will say that at the moment, 
the implementation of the multi-screen is not my favorite. There are other apps that let you multi-screen, multi-stream, screen, mm-hmm. whatever, and you choose. I believe yeah. the ESPN app lets you do it, where you can like choose the things you want to put on a multi-view and you do four up at a time. This one is, and I do appreciate it, it's gold medal matches, and then it's four different sports with gold medal matches going on at the same time, or just whatever combo that they're doing at the moment. Those are really or cool. if it's track and field, four different track events that are happening at the same time, and I it's become the happiest the Angela of all the Angelas. <laughs> this but, weekend, um, I kind of rotted and watched six hours of track and field, Saturday and Sunday, and Eva was like, I knew you were intense, but dang, wow. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Peacock app, definitely the way to go. The matches will be on Friday, August 9th. The bronze medal match will be at 6 a.m. Pacific time will be Spain against Germany. And we will get into kind of what happened there. And the gold medal match will be on Saturday at a slightly more reasonable time, 8 a.m. It will be Brazil versus the U.S. Or as Ethan in our wonderful Discord gave us the brilliant... AKA the Brazil Pride versus the US Gotham. Cause yeah, basically. <laughs> basically, that's, that's basically. What it is. <laughs> so, yeah, thank we, you, Ethan. we full that's... on were like, can we steal that? We're recording tonight. He was like, yeah. So, thanks, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. And then Janthony chimed in with a little tidbit after that, too. Oh, yeah. What was it? Oh, with a dash of courage because of the two players on brazil from houston and from north carolina like from north carolina english majors in this discord (laughs) (laughs) uh it's all fun and it's all friendly and it's been great it's good time to banter more in real time than through the instagram but hey i'm still doing the instagram thing too don't feel like you're being left out okay and then similar cup also happened the semi-final round which real quick Angel City lost. It's, we've been affectionately calling it the summer camp in the Discord. It's, we lost to a depleted Gotham team and a 14-year-old. You know, okay, hold on. Yes, a 14-year-old, but I would not consider Gotham depleted. I'm just saying. They have a stacked squad top to bottom. I, they I'm do. not. They do. Like. I'm, I'm saying depleted because they have seven they or have nine players on their out team. on duty. Yeah, no, I'm not saying they don't have I'm shaking great my head I'm like s- no. <laughs> what I'm saying though is that we have our entire 20, 20 I know, I don't want to talk roster. about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. It's as far just, as it is. I'm just trying to make us all feel better to know that yes, Gotham has a lot of national team players gone, but they're still stupid good. And it's rude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's what happened. We lost one to zero. Like we said, it was ultimately, I'm going to reiterate it from my point of view, even though we lost, if we make it to the end of this tournament, learning something, which it looked like we did up until this game, it looked like we were trying stuff. We were having fun with it. Things were flowing better. If a lot, if some of those learning points are making their way to the regular season, I'm all for it. Cool. We made it to the semifinals. Call it a learning experience. Great. I'm not, I'm not shedding tears because of this. Right. So it, it is what it is. The final for the summer cup matches, if you are interested in watching them will be held in San Antonio, Texas. On Friday, October 25th, just, that's the way tournaments work. You just take a big ass break to a final. Yeah, no, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Who knows? It's just Gotham and North Carolina. So, mm. and it'll be on Paramount Plus. Eh, who cares? <laughs> we might <laughs> remind you, we might forget. We don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Um, like, I care so about that- it, but there. I care about it because I care about it. 
for real, but I also like I don't have vested interest is what I'm saying. Yes. Now that I figured out what the, my words are. We will be the neutrals to that party, essentially. Yeah. yeah. As we do coming up to the finale of the Olympics, coming up to what is now our finale of the Summer Cup. We have some footy therapy sessions. I threw it out there about the Summer Cup. My prompt was summer camp is over. What do you think we learned to take into the regular season? And Vero just buddy, straight up. Yeah. Vero came in hot, but at the same time, she's not wrong. She said we didn't learn how to score. And <laughs> I think we learned and then we immediately forgot. I wasn't able to watch the game because I was at work and it was bonkers. But from everything I saw, it seemed like old habits found their way back into the game and there was just a lot of like stress and i don't know if it was because of the defense and the pressure or just in a not very cohesive situation on the pitch i don't know i'm just kind of right. taking a stab at being a fan for the last three seasons and making an assumption <laughs> we also had the we also started posting these questions on the discord too and oh. max came in with yeah, I think it was rather good for the team. I really liked the mm -hmm. Challenge Cup last year as a way to try out new things. And I attribute that to a lot of our late season success last year. Yeah, I think at a smaller scale, this will have the positive impact on how we play the next couple of months. Also glad we didn't make the final. Give the players a little rest and I get agree. them out of the swelter. On the downside couple really important injuries happening just as we get CP back. Yeah. Who got injured? I don't know because I couldn't watch the games. Oh. Giselle got injured at the beginning. I don't think I saw her playing since the first match. No, she's not back yet. Uh, Merritt, I think. She hasn't played. Sid's been sick slash injured. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm, yeah. Yeah. Look, we've we've got a couple weeks off till uh, the NWSL season restarts, so I think we're good. Um, and then the beauty of answering stuff on the Discord is that you can answer things with images. And <laughs> David coming in with, which if sorry you didn't see this because you were <laughs> at work, but there was a cute little. I've trash caught up panda. on the Discord though. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, I heard so much of that. that that was like running around the stadium. And so there's a really good picture of like <laughs> it running across people's feet and everybody just look. Eva, and that Eva texted me response. and was like, trash panda, KPCK. Like, <laughs> or K, K, C, K, C, P, K, C, K, C, P, K, 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 C, P, K. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Cause <laughs> I got it. I think I got it wrong. And I said, CPK stadium. Yeah, That's we were calling it CPK Stadium for a hot minute. Yeah. Okay. That was the responses we got for this. Like we said, people were even responding with, I half watched it or I watched it when I could or I caught up afterwards. Yeah. So, a 2 p.m. kickoff is difficult. Yeah. It was my work from home day, so I was able to watch it. But it is what it is. And yeah, we'll go from there. And... We have the U.S. women's national team back in the gold medal final. And for, for the first time in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Again, same thing. Post it up. I post it up that those last minute, those last five minutes were so stressful. Yeah. But how does everybody feel going into that gold medal match? And big we have feelings couple, about this. We, just there, we haven't I haven't talked about it in the discord I kept it secret but yeah let's read everybody else's and then I will put my two cents in <laughs> okay so Vero also coming in with I'm so excited I'm scared and Very, I had to laugh uh, I saved by the <laughs> bell Jesse Spano yes. reference and I love it <laughs> yep Mirna came with excited in Emma we trust. Honestly, she's 
really turned around the team or like at least she's given them a direction into shape yeah zach came with let's go all the way i believe in Hayes." i probably said that really weird but it's he meant it he had some gusto behind it (laughs) (laughs) and then aaron came with pretty stoked maybe a gold huh huh those were our so I'm, Instagram responses. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna throw maybe a wrench in this. We just played two back-to-back games with extra time. Brazil has not. Yes. Marta had a week's worth of rest. I'm very much gold medal for Marta at this point. <laughs> I want a gold medal for Uncle Nair. I want, like, Alyssa Nair and Naomi Gurma right now deserve the world. I saw one thing that France is border is like the northern part of France is covered by something. The rest is covered by Naomi Gurma. America's left foot is Alyssa Nair. Just those two alone save our ass every game in general. There was, there was a meme Base that level. said like the planet is covered in like 80% yeah. water and the rest of it's covered the rest by Alyssa Nair. <laughs> yeah, like those two, they can they get the gold? But... You know how I feel right now about the national team. It's very difficult for me. I want them to have a good tournament and to stand for something and to win gold, ideally. But it's Marta's very probable last international game. And Brazil just said, nah, to Mm -hmm. the world, basically. (laughs) To Um, being eliminated twice. By Spain, the reigning World Cup champions, who have had a weird tournament, but... It's Marta. Yes, she had a red card and it was a dumb decision and she knew it. And I don't know how I feel about two game suspension, but like. Can two things both be true? Can we win the gold and Brazil? This is like the only time I think Mm -hmm. I've ever been like, but can both teams win? Normally I'm like, can they both lose (laughs) this one? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) This one, I I am getting my American fan card probably revoked by a lot of people, but I think Brazil has this one just because they have not played as many minutes. Their team has been rotated. I was going to say their team has maybe been managed a little bit better in the sense of playing time and rotations and subs and all of that. I just think right now, right now it sways in their Yeah. But I think it sways a little in their favor right now. Height-wise, I think we have them. But set pieces, who knows? Yeah. Um, The three responses that we ended up getting (laughs) on the Discord all had the same sentiment, basically. Eva said, I want Marta to get her gold. Yeah. I'm like, Marta! (laughs) Yeah. Katie came in with, I'm feeling ambivalent about who wins. That's the $10,000 <laughs> therapy term for you. Yep. <laughs> and then you came in with, to be honest, hoping a rested and feisty Brazilian team gets scold from Marta. <laughs> like Gotham for creeps. Me just being basically. mad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I'm still going to go bleed white, red, white, and blue. The U.S. is going to take all. Beat all challengers that, you know, I got to find a big ass flag to wave outside um you're gonna screech ah, freedom <laughs> yeah. but, but, but i do think it's gonna be a pretty good match it's gonna be a game i don't think i would be completely disappointed if brazil pulls it out See? i would be completely disappointed if it ends up being like a stupid ass goal like <laughs> Basically, the first Brazilian goal, which was like an own goal. And if the game ended at 1-0 to there, then that would have been like, that was a shitty game. But Yeah, same. I, like, I want a good, good match. Yeah, but I will put my finger on the scale towards the U.S. if I could. Sorry, Marta, you're a legend, but legends live in our memories. Wow. Ooh. 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 The w- uh, right now. We'll see if we keep that in. Yeah, I was going to say, the competitor in me is just like, I hope Brazil wins. And you, I, it's one of those where I'm like, please, 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 I need 14 words. goals from Brazil. I want to be right so bad. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's. Okay, so it'll be a good match footage. regardless. It'll be good. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's go through the bits, interesting bits that happen that might be a part of what this next match is going to be. So we had the U.S. versus Germany in a one to nil game. It was, you can tell, Yeah, it wasn't a very exciting game. Because they're all exhausted. Me, all because both, they're all both teams. They played so many minutes. <gasps> and Julie Foudy, as one of the commentators, was like just talking about the travel mm-hmm. too. They're playing all these minutes, yet they now have to travel across France to another stadium. There was, yeah, was just a, like lot. a bunch of things involved. That are just not conducive to like. It's if you're gonna make them travel, give them longer rest periods. If you're not, yeah. then keep them together. But you're combining both. Now you're just getting a worse product on the field. But yeah, they especially when games are going into extra time and PKs in the quarterfinals, like which this one did. There, so oh. we were already saying that the U.S. and Germany were both tired because they were both coming off 120 minute games. Germany coming off of a full going into PKs, right? Then we get this game and they go 120 minutes. They go into the, the extra time. I was gassed. It looked like it was going towards PKs again. Yeah. And then they scored. And then that's where I was like telling, I was just park the bus. You just park that <laughs> yeah. bus. Park the bus. Double decker bust, like you, just, you <laughs> hold it, and yeah, like it, it's just they're tired, they're gassed, there weren't, yeah, there's not a ton of rotation happening. So, going into this next match, we now have the U.S. on short rest playing two two hour matches, yeah, and then we had yeah. Brazil Spain, which was crazy shenanigans on the field yeah that was just yeah everything i saw was just like oh my god oh my god like not even details just holy crap (laughs) yeah yeah uh there's just like brazil dominated that entire game and again if we start looking at what has happened spain went the full 120 the match before and in the pks brazil yeah no they won it in regular time and like, so they played a normal match. They got to rest. They didn't have to run an extra half hour. Um, Spain went into PKs. They were coming in on short rest, tired, playing all of that. Brazil was like, yeah, cool. We had a nice night rest. And then and they, they dropped dominated. four goals. Yeah. <laughs> they dominated most of that match. And then it was this late surge. Kind of what Spain did with Colombia. Mm-hmm. It was a very late game surge where they started coming back. They scored two. So you're like, are they? did they flip the momentum 100% and just be like, we're going to score the other two and we're going to take this into PKs or into overtime or whatever. But yeah, no, it was too little too late for yeah. Spain. But yeah, I agree if you with want, that. If you want that masterclass of shithousery, <laughs> those those Brazilian Brazil players. knows what they're doing. Yep, lots of being on the ground, lots of a couple of them were real, like the the goalie at yeah. one point, like she got she got her ankle like smashed, <laughs> and and this the Spanish player that was like next to her, she's like, what is this? Um, not knowing <laughs> that because she shoved the defender or whoever it was from Brazil that like smashed her that landed ankle, oh. yeah. So she was down for a bit. There was a beautiful little moment in in a corner kick for Spain where they were near where the Brazilian players were warming up and they just got a little bit closer to that corner and started warming up, doing high knees or doing whatever right next to the Spanish player. And the ref said nothing. (laughs) They just went for the corner kick. This whole tournament has felt very conca Like in the chaos... 
extra time in the abundance of PKs and stoppage time. It was like very NWSL CONCACAF uh, overlap. Yes. Again. And if you're new to the shenanigans and the term CONCACAF or you've been CONCACAF, meaning you just got punked by a CONCACAF <laughs> team when we're playing these international matches, it, I like to think if you were watching any of the summer men's tournaments where it was like the Euros and then Copa America that mm -hmm. was being held in the U.S., there is so much content being being done on social media about the differences between the Euros and Copa America. And then I think one of my favorite ones was like the guy was like dribbling the ball and then he gets fouled and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, dude. Like, and the ref yeah. gives them a card, like all nice and quiet. It'd be like, you got a card and then walks away. Right. And then it's, it's like Copa America. The guy gets fouled. The ref like pulls out his card and then someone drop kicks the ref. <laughs> Player's still down Jesus. rolling around, like doing 50 somersault. Like, yep. There's legendary CONCACAF moments of other countries Conca leaving their vibe. grass really like, low. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vibe. I remember the, 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 all the complaints. And I laugh just because like I'm heritage wise i'm from el salvador but like the u.s playing down el salvador and they're like the grass is too long and that's motherfucker kids play on the streets with rocks and you're complaining that the grass is too long you're yep. little suburban right like come on it is what it is it's, it's like the same not every country has priced everybody out of the sport that costs like zero dollars to play like exactly not uh, everybody's another, gonna complain an about the lamest yeah anyway Another version of CONCACAF is when the U.S. had to play some it's Central American. I, maybe it was Colombia. Or maybe, maybe I don't know who it was. One of the Central American, South American countries. And they're like, oh, yeah. And we get to host. Oh, so we're going to be playing in like the northernest stadium we can. And we're going to be playing in snow. Or more southern. Wasn't it like deep? southern argentina or something like that like into arctic circle antarctic circle <laughs> now that i'm thinking oh, well, the about, one, or was it the one where it was like the men's u.s team versus whoever it, it skips me but whoever this was they ended yeah. up playing in new york or something like that. oh that's Close, right in, yeah yeah in april the, and it was, it was like infamous, buffalo yeah yeah it's like yeah. the infamous that's snow what? match yeah, yeah. they go put so a snow on the ground mean. yeah you give us long grass we give you snow <laughs> wild so yes that is a brief lesson on CONCACAF or being CONCACAF but yes the, this tournament has had real CONCACAF vibes it's been very physical the refs have been letting a lot of stuff go which or so than this. most international games too yeah it's not necessarily oh the refs were so bad it was like oh the game is getting unsafe maybe maybe toot that whistle just a little bit Oh, here's a random stat that Eva told me, not about the Olympics, but she was watching the ACFC game and texted me and said, did you know McCall Zerboni has the most fouls in the NWSL collectively over the entirety of the league? <laughs> the second person is Carly Lloyd with 100 less, 100 less fouls. Fouls. <laughs> So many battles. <laughs> and she is that player, just as Carl is, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll have to that look That was up. just a why to make sure <laughs> I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look this player up because I am not familiar and oh, I might learn. You gonna learn today. <laughs> <laughs> McCall Zerboni is known for being a very physical player. She's been in the league for a long time. Um, she is McCall Zerboni. She's the one who used language that was, it's like outdated language regarding Native Americans and indigenous folks. Mm -hmm. And Madison Hammond called her out on it. And she's, I didn't know. And that's it. No apology. Like, oh, I'll fix my language in the future. Just, mm, you know what I meant? That's not how that yes. works. But. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, my calls are bony is my calls are bony and that's it <laughs> with the record she has then i guess i will find out about her soon enough i don't have to necessarily go look her up 
<laughs> we okay, keep it positive so quick- on the pod. That's what I'm saying. There, She's got yeah. a lot of fans. She's a very good soccer player. She's just maybe not for me. No. And that, people, is what you call a difference of opinion. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Because I'm not denying anybody their human <laughs> rights. Genesis. All right. Bronze Damn. medal match. Spain versus Germany. What do you think is going to... Who do you got? Or what do you think Ooh, we should look out for? Cause I think is- Germany is going to take this because I think they have a better defense right now. Spain has given up a lot of goals. So unless they do something to lock it down, I think Germany has it just because Berger is the German version of Alyssa Nair at this point. She's so good. She's. I don't know if... I don't know if the fact that Spain didn't go into it and Germany did for a second match, is that yeah. going to get... But although Germany... I don't know. My, my perspective, I think, is a little skewed, a little off. Because, like, the Germany-USA match, they looked evenly matched and really solid, but they also looked super gassed, like everybody on the field, both sides. So a, it could be... They have a cup, like what, one more day of rest? Yes. Yeah. So I think, honestly, I, I think it's I think it's just going to be a good game. S- yeah. Spain is good, but they've had a weird tournament. They're they in have, a transition a phase t- the opposite way that Germany is. Yeah, and they're the income. They're the incoming World Cup defending yeah. champs. But yeah, their team. They're the surging team, too late. Yeah, surging... and the team management feels weird. Like the the roster, like starting rosters versus subs. And granted, what do I know? But it feels like the team isn't being used to its potential to start the game. Yeah. And Germany is on the come up, truly. They're coming back as like a force to be reckoned with as a national team. I don't know. I don't know if a captain, if COP will be available. K-O-P-P, not C-O-P. If she'll be available. Because two of their players weren't available this game. Which is, I yeah. think, why we won. Honestly. So, I think they loaded up on defense for us. Because two of their players weren't available. And just held it in, which I don't blame him. Yeah. All right. It'll be it'll be an interesting match. The game is going to be at a stupid 6 a.m. <laughs> for us. I know. Here on the West Coast on Friday, August 9th. So at least maybe you'll get to watch, if you're working that day, half the match. And then. Yeah. I'll probably get up and watch uh, the second half because yeah. I cannot get up earlier than I need to that day because I have to be up very mm-hmm. late on uh, Friday night. On Because I'm going Thursday. to a Megadeth concert. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. So I'm shadowing my mentor who works at the venue that this concert's at and she's like, hey, do you want to do this? And I'm like, sure. Completely forgetting it's the Olympics. Whatevs. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so you will be waking up for this match And also staying up late for the Megadeth concert on Friday. And then Saturday, you will be rolling out of bed at 7.59. Getting up early. Like if that's a wake up and watch it on my phone. (laughs) 8 a.m. is a lot more reasonable to to be able to watch. But then we have the gold medal match on Saturday, August 10th, Brazil versus the U.S., I think we've already set our pieces on this. We are split 50-50. We are split. So we will see what happens. Again, it's all a game. It's all for sport. Whoever wins, wins. But yeah, casual FC is split 50-50 on this one. So, and that Mario's is not like, to it's say- It's a game. And I'm just like, it's what? Like, <laughs> uh, It's- this is and for just all like the we've marbles. Said in, it is for all the marbles. And yeah, just like we've said in a couple of previous episodes, totally not like Angela's not red, white, and blue here. Like I just want us to be better. 
Yeah. Yeah. And As guess like what? a people. The, and guess what? There's an entire Olympic tournament with red, white, and blue in it. So yeah. So there you go. Yeah. What, what have you been watching? What's been your favorite Olympic event so far? Okay. So I've started watching BMX Cross, which... Okay. One, like in my head, I was like, oh, why why isn't this just motocross? And then I'm thinking, oh, yeah, the Olympics is all about human achievement, human sport. So you power the device. Like you, they're not in speedboats. They're in sailing boats. They're in, they're rowing and they're kayaks. They're, it's all human powered. So it makes sense. But the <laughs> this BMX cross, it looks like they're riding like my daughter's bike looks like they're riding little kid bikes and they're that's doing why i don't these... like bmx because it's stressful i'm like you're riding the bike of a child can i understand exactly. the point but it's it stresses me out <laughs> it's so funny it, it it feels like the clown at the at the circus when they get on the tiny little bike in their big clown shoes it's like, like riding that what, what was like. it a big wheel do you remember those oh yeah those yeah that's what awesome. it feels like to me i'm just like because the bike moves so much yeah yeah. The other thing that I've been watching in little clips and highlights and stuff, I haven't been able to watch anything live, but the climbing events and the oh, one yeah. that they have I where they go this... side by side. Do yeah, the they... race, like the speed event. Freaking spider monkeys. You know that kid that says, I'm going to come at you like a spider monkey? That's yeah. That, it's that kid grown up do climbing on the wall. It's insane. Uh, and then the other one that I really got into another insert sport cross um has been uh canoe cross or kayak cross basically it's four single kayakers starting yeah. on an elevated platform and they drop and they them get, in they drop them in and then they just they all start paddling and then they have to do their little like spin around the buoys and things like and that and then they have to do a and flip yeah, they have to flip under a barrier, so they have to flip upside down into the water. And you're allowed, because it's a race, you're allowed to bump into each other. Like, it yeah. is acceptable. So as one, I was watching one where someone was going around a buoy, and the guy just came in and rammed him, so pushed him out from completing huh? a little turn. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, oh, what's happening? It's so stressful it's to me amazing. because one of my big fears is not being able, if I'm trapped underwater, not to be able to swim. And granted, I know they have their little zippy thing and they can just pop out of their boats really easy. But knowing that their legs are folded and they're zippered into their little tiny boats. Nope. <laughs> hard pass. Absolutely not. But yeah, I love watching the kayak events and actually a 17 year old Yes. You know, speaking yes, red, yes, white, yes. and blue, 17 year old mm -hmm. woman, girl, young woman, won silver. Yeah. Without, this is her first Olympics. She wasn't some dirt. She, she made the, the final heat the, or the final run, but she was the very first person to go on yeah. that run, meaning she was the very last qualifying spot for the finals. Yeah. And she made it. She was holding first till the last two or three people, the, contestants. Yeah. It, oh, that was, it was amazing. Everybody that was supposed to beat her either got DQ'd because they missed a mark they were supposed to hit, were, were slower. Like all these things happen and she's just sitting there and you could, like the camera was on her eyes, just got bigger and was like, oh yeah. my God, oh my God. You, I felt like a 17 year old again watching her being like, oh my God, oh my God. Like you just freaked out with her. The greatest part of all of that was the fact that the very last person to run was the favorite. Yeah. Was the favorite to be like, they clean this run, they've won gold. They're right. just going to, they're that fast. And she's sitting in her like silver spot. And then this person starts going and then they get stuck in a whirlpool and then they miss a buoy. And basically everything that can go wrong, unfortunately, went wrong for yeah. this. It was sad, this. honestly. It was like, oh, I want you just to finish with a good time at least. But that's not what happened. Yeah. And then they, in the replay, they showed like the cameras that were on her. And when she realizes that, oh, she just majorly fucked up and I'm getting a medal, like that type of excitement. It's, it was great. It was like, those are the moments where you're just like, this is amazing. And then we were just watching, actually. 
during dinner, we were watching the women's skate final. Out of the six, the six people playing in the finals, two of them were 20 and 23, and then everybody else was under 15. So I'm like, oh, man. The the way skateboarding is like, I, this is for the youths. Like, this is for the <laughs> youth. The part that I, the part that got me doing the like head math of wait what, is when they're like, oh she's representing Japan and she won silver in uh, Tokyo in the last Olympics and it's like, she's only fourteen. What do you mean she won silver? In yeah, Tokyo? <laughs> insane. But it's because they're little and they can fly. Like <laughs> they and don't they hurt bounce yet. when they fall. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. What about you? What What have you? What What have? Uh, since, okay. This is going to be an interesting question because it's more for you. What has either been a new sport to you in the sense that you're watching it and being like, "I'm getting this. I'm understanding this," or something that you've never given has? You're so oh. overflowed with sports. That this hasn't <laughs> gone in that bucket yet. And you were like, oh, this is cool. Let me add that. Probably the kayak cross. Honestly, that is the most stressful thing really I've cool. ever watched. But I loved it. it. The upper body and core strength that's needed to navigate a boat is bonkers. That, yeah. yeah, I haven't unfortunately been able to watch too much of the newer sports or the smaller sports because my work schedule and life has not allowed me to. And I'm actually very upset about it but we're not gonna talk about that hopefully the olympic app just stays around that you can watch it in the next go back and watch stuff the next i know time, i'm like so. will you allow me a replay over the next two weeks but yeah i just i have been watching soccer basketball um volleyball and track and field which if i have to pick any sports out of the olympics that's what i'm picking mm. i raced home from work yesterday i already knew their results and turned on the women's discus final just to watch valerie allman i follow her on instagram i follow her on twitter i love her she's a fantastic representation of the sport feng bin from china who's also a discus thrower is amazing you guys know i am a track and field girl at heart first and foremost before just about everything else aside from basketball and soccer track and field makes me sob i wept Mm-hmm. over the weekend multiple times i'm so proud of team usa they're absolutely killing it on the track and there's still more to come we still have four more days of track and field hell yeah yeah i it's this olympics really has me thinking that maybe i should try to rehab myself back into shape to go into masters meets because i miss it that much and i love it that much and i still have all my stuff we'll see what happens <laughs> yeah it would be, but man, it's track and field is such a graceful, cool sport. There's been so many world records, Olympic records, personal bests beaten this year, like just in the last four days. It's magnificent. It's a magnificent feat of strength and agility and all the things that you want out of sport in general. And I just love it. I just love it so much. We were joking at work yesterday that like for L.A., does the company just shut down? Because like our crew is out, our tree crew, they're like our guys are out there driving around, like they're doing a bunch of stuff, and we're like, wait, that's gonna suck. Like during the yeah. Olympics, the marathon is gonna shut down streets, the road race is gonna shut down streets, triathlon's gonna shut down. It's gonna be bonkers. We all know traffic is bad already. There's a gazillion people here. There's gonna be two gazillion for the Olympics. So like, yeah. I'm like, what if we just all volunteer? Like we just all go work the Olympics, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. And then my boss yeah, looked at me and exactly. she goes, I don't hate that idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I may have the, just changed the future of the company I work for. <laughs> I mean, all for it, all for it. They, I think, what what was it? Oh, someone was telling me that like in the 84 Olympics, like everybody was told basically, let's just, we, we can make this thing work. So if you have an odd numbered license plate, you know, try to drive on these days. And then if you don't, if you have the even ones, try to drive on these days and maybe we can reduce traffic and blah, blah, blah. And it like <laughs> amazingly worked. It was like the. But that was also in the 80s. <laughs> but I will say like more recently, like the everybody freaking out about Carmageddon. When yeah. When the 405 was shut down. 
but it, was it actually fine. worked. Yeah. It and that's worked. the thing. Major thoroughfares in L.A. County as a whole have off streets. Like there's streets that parallel freeways and streets that can get you to the same place without jumping on the freeway. And you can get around things a lot easier than most cities. Yeah. It, it, and it'll work. If, and if you know it's going to be shit out there, like stay. you stay home or you leave earlier or you, you yeah. like account for it. You account exactly. for anything in L.A. already. <laughs> so you're like, oh, I'm going from Inglewood to Culver City. Normally that takes 20 minutes or probably 45 minutes early just in case there's an accident or just in case there's yeah. a traffic. Some, uh, there's construction. I, I, I kid you not. When I go to my parents' place, I ask Siri if there's a Dodgers game going on because I have to drive yep. near near Dodger Stadium. And if the game is, oh, yeah, the game's tonight. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Psh. But then it's, oh, it's an afternoon game. I'm like, shit, like I'm going to have to go around. <laughs> yeah, we have to go a different way. But yeah, yeah, LA 28 is coming. It's going to be all over the city. So start preparing now. <laughs> Save your money for yeah. tickets. Go to LA28.org to sign up on their mailing list to get information on tickets and volunteer opportunities. As things get. Imagine our coverage that we're going to have to do for LA 28. Because it's in our I'll here. screech. <laughs> On, I just, I can't even think about it. I get too excited. And I know there's a lot of issues that come with hosting an Olympic Games. And it's very controversial for a lot of reasons. There's a lot of things that most cities can do a hell of a lot better in supporting the residents of the city and those who live and work and all the things in the city. But as an athlete... There are a few better accomplishments, and I think there needs to be a better way to navigate through the Olympics. Like cities and places need to do better in supporting their communities while bringing the games in. I'm just going to stand on that because there's a lot of things that come with a lot of people coming to a city, like bad things that need to be handled better and managed more thoroughly than anybody really wants to think about out loud and talk about out loud. But I think, I hope anyway, that L.A. can really get a jump on stuff and really work to navigate within the confines of the city and represent, to have an international city represent the world is super dope. So I'm excited for L.A. 28, if you can't tell. <laughs> yeah, I'm equally as excited to wrap up our Olympic footy coverage. Thank you everyone for listening to this, these last couple of episodes, making them, producing them, editing them has been a whirlwind of stuff. S looked at my phone and Kansas city had their trash Panda. Um, Dodger stadium tried to one up them. And in the ninth inning, a possum invaded Dodger stadium and snuck into a hole in the wall. Rodents. It's like rodent revenge in sports day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to Shenanisodes <laughs> brought to you by Casual yes. FC. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Thank you for listening. If you've listened to any one of these episodes, they are a whirlwind to make and edit and get out in the kind of weird short schedule. I'm not going to say we're as tired as the players in the tournament right now, but we're pretty tired. We were keeping we're a different kind of tired. <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, thank you for the support. And remember that when the season starts back up on August 24th, Casual FC will be having our own watch party at Watch Me Sports Bar for the San Diego Wave versus ACFC match. If you can't make your way all the way down to San Diego or don't want to sit in a stadium with no shade at one o'clock in the afternoon, come hang out with us. We're just going to have a blast. Just honestly, shenanigans. Like we just said, Angela's going to do the jock jams during halftime. We're just no, going to. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I will freak out and get stage fright and probably hide in the bathroom or something. So don't do that. <laughs> don't make me do it. We'll at least play the song. Oh, for if sure. If we get the rights to it. I don't know. All right. With all of that being said, if you like what you hear, hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening. Check out casualofc.com for all the pod links. Best way to support the pod. Always share, comment, just engagement. Do something on one of our social media platforms. It helps. And it helps spread the word. If you want to help us 
monetarily. You can always buy some merch at shop.casualfc.com and more stuff coming throughout the year. And maybe if we're not doing stuff this year, we still have a few things that went out this year. And then, you know, we're always banking stuff for the next season. So we'll see what's going on there. And if you feel so inclined and would like to help support the pod and you don't need extra crap in your house, <laughs> you don't need an extra t-shirt um, and you still want to support us, you can always buy us a coffee at uh, the link on our socials or go to buymeacoffee.com slash casual FC pod. Uh, it helps us with what we're doing. We're doing this really for fun out of our own pocket and any little bit helps the we're not hitting the thousands of listeners, but yeah, we don't have to. We're having fun with it. And everybody that listens, you guys are amazing. Follow us on all the socials, Casual FC Pod on Instagram, Twitter, Threads, and TikTok. And tell a friend about the pod, please. One, for the watch party. Two, for the crazy content we were doing for the Olympics. And all of that's going to just generate good luck that we will bank and bring to the team for the beginning of the NWSL season again for the restart and for this kind of last hurrah towards the end of the season and hopefully it gets us into the playoffs and gets us more episodes. Really selfishly just thinking about playoffs and us having more episodes. So that's weird. <laughs> At least good luck for us, but ideally the team. Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Later.